group dynamics introduction your main aim apparently is to understand why do individuals form group let us ask you some question how old were you when you first joined a group how may different group do you belongs to how would you identify a group leader how uh, how does your behavior change when you are with the different groups have you ever led a group in what sense were you the leader what were the result if on your own you start answering these questions you will find that uh, understanding group behavior and the properties of group are essential to being both a good manager and an effective member of groups if in some of the preceding units of lesson in this course you must have to now familiar you, have, you must have by now become familiar with the manager's functions related to group For example, a manager spend half of his time in some formal and informal meeting where a group of uh, people get together to solve problems to make plans. So the manager himself act as a member of a group uh, with other managers or colleagues. In last unit, you have come across the Hawthorne studies. Uh, this study demonstrated that group has a powerful effect on human behavior any increase in output those workers in the hawthorne studies was because of importance and attention given to the group of workers by the researchers as well as their own interactions with each other about the quality and quantity of output they were supposed to produce in 17 units you come across the fact that people are motivated to act in a certain way in a given situation and one should change the situation in order to make the people act the way one wants them to there are also many examples where the manager decides to take a decision on his own or to rely on groups by holding meetings or making committees in management small groups with which he interacts are very important for a manager it may consist of his peers or colleagues or managers specialist or others who rely rely helps really helps the manager to take an effective decision you might have also come across instance of well knit and cohesive groups which really makes a superior performance under a group leader for all these purposes you must try to gain understanding of how to manage a group and how to become a more effective group member in order to develop uh, above two objectives you must uh, always keep in mind that a group is part of a larger organization with which it interacts it is in this context uh, that we talked of group dynamics so we must understand the meaning of group dynamics before we talk about the dynamics of group information now let's go to the next topic group dynamics e- group dynamics is concerned with the interaction and force among group members in social situation in the context of this course of management functions and behavior it is important to understand dynamics of members of formal or informal groups in the organization in the 1930s court levis popularized the term group dynamics to mean interaction of forces among group peoples in the social situations you are already familiar with in unit first is with the three style of leadership that is authoritarian democratic and laissez faire with levin 1939 and his associate associates have developed by creating three different social members uh, for the three styles of leadership in course of time various meanings were attached to the term groups dynamics kelly 1974 one of the meaning suggest how a group should be organized and conducted in democratic leadership member participation and overall cooperation are emphasized 
Another meaning of group dynamics is that it is a set of techniques in various group exercises is tries to make the leaders as well as the members effective an attempt is made to make the above members play their roles in dynamics in a management situation of group discussion team building finding out various solution to problem by brainstorming and understanding ourselves in relation to others while we transact on interact with others such exercises are also provided in situation where only members are present and no leader exist in direct or control the group all these exercises are techniques to develop both the individuals as well as organization in which he or she works the last meaning of the term group dynamics is closest to levis levins use of terms suggesting internal nature of the groups as to how they are formed what their structures and processes are how they function and affect affect individual members other groups and the organization in this unit our maintain our main attention will be focused on the third meaning of the term you will appreciate therefore the plan here to start with defining a group and then consider the dynamics of group formation we will move to the next topic what is group what is a group a group is any number of people who have the common purposes or objective interact with each other to accomplish their objective and are aware of one another and perceive themselves to be part of the group this is the way hughes and bardich 1977 defines a group you were asked at the beginning as to how many different groups you belong to you may see from the above definition and throughout our lives we belong to many different groups families are groups a cricket team is a group a club is a group drama and music organization all are group you can thus apply the concept of groups to various example of religion politics consumer sports etc as the case may be in management we primarily talk about group of at work in most organizations getting the work done requires group effort thus a manager must know how to manage an individual by knowing the individual dynamics such as his value personality perception and attitudes the as discussed earlier also a manager must know how to manage a group by understanding group dynamics at this point the number of people as contained in the definition of the group should not be taken too literally at some point the number of people may become too large to fit the rest of the definition for example all the people of india cannot interact with each other also each group has a common objective but the member who belongs to it may have other personal objective for example a life insurer as and may like to become a member of a parent teacher association of a school to help promote the development process of its student but belonging to that association will also help in him to increase his or her contact to ensure more and more people so he get more commissioned for as many members as he can sell the insurance to what is more important most important in the context of definition of a group is to be aware of each other in a group this awareness is seldom here seldom there where when we look at an aggregation an aggregation of people there are mere collection different from that what we call a group where members see themselves as belonging to a group in order to interact and achieve the common objective of the group 
मोर ओवर सच काइंड ऑफ इंटरेक्शन में बी ओवर अ लॉन्ग और शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम इन वेटिंग फॉर अ बस पैसेंजर्स मेक अ क्यू ऑल ऑफ देम हैव अ कॉमन पर्पज दैट इज टू इंटर द बस आफ्टर बाइंग टिकट्स वी कैनॉट कॉल देम अ ग्रुप थ्रू दे हैव अ कॉमन पर्पज सडनली अ पर्सन ब्रेक्स द क्यू टू गो अहेड all others get together to prevent that person from get crashing and getting his ticket ahead of those standing in the queue before him at the moment a group is formed perhaps after controlling that person from getting a ticket out of turn the other keeps continuing to talk of each others but the common purpose of keeping the queue breaker out vanishes the group disappears and the number of people becomes an aggregation or a collection we will move to the next topic the dynamics of group formation the dynamics of group formation for the above example it becomes imperative that you should understand why people do form into groups some people believe that it is because of pro inquity or a affiliating with one another that individuals form into groups in a room people sitting nearer to each other may easily make a group that people sitting at opposite ends to a group this kind of affiliation of people uh, and with each other is due to spatial spatial uh, nearness of geographical nearness but it does not help us to understand some of the complexity of group formation which more which are more than mere affiliation due to physical or geographical nearness it will do you good to know some major theories of group formation in brief theories of group formation first hormon 1950 explain explained the basis of group formation in form of activities interaction and sentiments of people these three elements are directly related to each other in the above example of controlling a queue breaker in the line the required activities are the assigned task at which people work all others knew that their turn and how to in exercise it specially with a certain change of then created by a queue breaker the required the required interaction takes place when any one person activity follows or is is influenced by the activity of another in this example the person whose turn was dislocated by the group breaker influences all others activities as soon as he pushes out the person the queue breaker or tells him not to do it all others follow him hence requires hence required interaction may be verbal telling him not to break the queue or non verbal pushing him uh, out of the queue one can see the activities and the interactions but as sentiments are the feelings or attitude of a person towards others his likes or dislikes approval or disapproval can only be interfered from the behavior interfered from the behavior after the activity of throwing out the queue breaker changed the interactions also change in the above example people talks to each other in a very formal way after the succeed in throwing out of the queue breaker this informal interactions known as emersal emergent interactions change in activities into informal or emergent activities such as people reorganizing their queue and ensuring that no other intruder comes in out of turn etc all these activity emerge because of the sentiments or feeling of the people you will notice that the more activities the 
people share the more numerous will be their interactions and the stronger will be their mutual sentiments therefore in terms with more interactions among person the more will be their shared activities and sentiments again in turn the more sentiments the person have for have for one another the more will be their shared activities and interactions Hohmann theory therefore explain the formation of groups on the basis of people's interaction with each other people are not only physically together but they are also solve they also solve problems attain goals facilitate coordination reduce tension and achieve the balance in an organization the participants interact with each other in this manner and tend to form into powerful groups second newcomb 1961 stated a theory known as balanced theory of group formation which explains group formation on the basis of attention of person towards each other as they have similar attitudes towards common objects or goals for example person a and b will interact and form a relationship because of their common attitudes and value towards c a balanced theory of group formation is common attitudes and values next politics next religion in, in, and literature work and aesthetics authority marriage if a and b form a relationship or a group they will strive to maintain a symmetrical balance between the attention attraction and the common attitudes and values whenever this relationship between a and b becomes unbalanced more both them will try to restore the restore the balance if the balance cannot be restored then their relationship is distorted dissolved both affiliation and interaction play a significant role in balanced theory third is thibaut and kelly 1959 talk of another theory of group formation stating the outcome of interaction as the basis of group formation the outcome of a relationship should be rewarding in order to have attraction or affiliation among the person or members of group the person derive personal and social satisfaction from having interactions with each other if they incur anxiety or frustration or embarrassment or fatigue in such interactions then that interaction become a cost for them them rather than a reward thibaut and kelly's theory of group formation is known as exchange theory of rewards and cost outcome you will part appreciate that there are affiliate affiliation interaction and common attitudes all plays role in the exchange theory what do groups offer to individuals for individuals there are some very practical reasons to join a group or forming a group if you are hungry you can satisfy your needs for food by eating this needs for food involves others too you need money to buy a food but in order to have money you must work for it and uh, you or have someone give it to you very few people can live alone or in isolation like robinson crusoe but most of us can satisfy our need only with the, the throughout the other people let us see what some of the needs are that groups helps us to satisfy first is safety and security needs do you remember the very first question asking you as to how old you were when you joined first group the answer is perhaps you joined in a group in your preschool years in a nursery classroom you learned to pretend yourself by being in a group a uh, newborn babies have to be protected from a hostile world and therefore he or she belongs to a group by depending on it for its security and comfort it is nursery classes a teacher asks 
द स्मॉल किड्स हु क्रोक टॉयज एंड शेल्डम गेट्स एन आंसर ऑल द किड्स कीप क्वाइट ऑल द ऑल द यंग दे प्रोटेक्ट दियर नंबर्स बाय नॉट डिस्क्लोजिंग एनीबडीज नेम और पॉइंटिंग आउट एट एनी वन इन अ ग्रुप अ टीनेजर एट द एडोलेसेंट स्टेज डिराइव्स derives social support from his group when he or she strives for individual independence in taking decisions and action you may like to appreciate how groups is a source of support to an individual in an organization workers becomes members of a union and thus feels more secure to be with the group even in emergency activity or putting of fire the fire fighters depends on each other for protection similarly coal miners depend heavily on each others for protection these are cases where individual doing hazardous job or as above derive psychological and psychological and physiological support from the group they need to be physically together even if they know that this may increase their collective danger this helps them to more confident and able to perform well less fearful and more responsible to carry out their duties second relatedness of belongingness needs you might have noticed many person in your working life who are very isolated or who prefers to be absent from work most of the time or an organization having high turnover of employees or frequent change of employers studies show such phenomena occurs when people are unable to belong to group this is because of the fact that all of us are social being and belonging to or relating to groups satisfies a number of social needs we get emotional support from a group which is particularly helpful at times of stress in normal situations as in seen in hawthorn studies affiliation to a group has a major influence or on human behavior in organization when we are isolated from human communication and companionship companionship uh, we simplify loss touch with reality third is esteem and growth need when do you when you do a piece of work you get a praise for others this groups how this gives how a sense of recognition with fruit fulfills your esteem needs being recognized and also bring a sense of fulfillment of your needs for growth towards further achievement of groups work and career as prospects we should now make ourselves familiar with many kinds of groups and many different ways to classify them in the present management course we should concentrate on both formal and informal groups is team existing in organizations we shall talk uh, of other groups but in brief types of groups first is formal groups these groups are established by organization to accomplish specific task according to Cartwright and Zander 1974 this groups includes command groups which consist of manager and their direct subordinates and committees and task forces which are created to carry out specific organizational assignment or activities example in an educational institution there are three broad formal groups of teachers students and administrations in the command groups the top administration or principal or lead head to of the institution has head of departments of different disciplines as his direct subordinates 
various committees to look at academic activities of teaching and research are made to carry out the assignment of the organizations various task forces are set to carry out specific activities such as selecting students making of a curriculum developing teaching and evaluating methods moder- moderating performance etc in each departments for a specific discipline or course the example can be extended to student groups of various levels and disciplines having their common groups committees and task forces as well as administrative staff of various level and categories such as academic accounts audit sports etc in all cases command groups and committees continues to exist whereas task forces are usually established to solve a particular problem they are disbanded after the work is done the idea of task force is more appreciable applicable to manufacturing or service organizations rather than research institutions in the latter kind of organization task forces consist of managers technical experts from research development marketing production and purchasing departments to make sure that each new products passes through smoothly from the idea stage through the production stage in and into market second is informal groups these groups are formed within the structure of the organization but by the members themselves rather than by organization sometimes they do not have the approval the management basically formal basically informal groups are formed to satisfy social needs on the job sometimes they are formed to perform a task better sometimes they are formed to held production at the certain level in a rigid system of organization these informal groups meet fairly regularly to cut short the rigid bureaucratic practices of the management third is primary group Colley 1911 defined and analyzed primary group as those characterized by intimate face to face association and cooperation they are primarily in several senses but chiefly in that they are fundamental in forming a social nature and ideal of the individuals examples of primary group is family and the peer group many people use the term small group interchangeably with primary group but the small group only meets the criterion of small size for face to face interaction and communication to occur in addition to being small primary group must have a feeling of comradeship feeling comradeship loyalty and the common sense of values among all these members thus all primary groups are small groups but riots all small groups are primary the logic of primary group is extended to work group in uh, hathorn studies these work groups have primary group qualities and tremendously influence individual behavior irrespective of contact or environmental conditions four membership groups these are the one to which individual act actually belongs example clubs cooperative societies workers union etc fifth is reference group these are the one which with which an individual identifies or to which he would like to belongs example socially or prefer- professionally prestigious groups with which the individual would like to belong sixth is the in group the in group represents a clustering of individual holding prevailing values in a society or at least having a dominant place in social functioning example members of a team family members 
Seventh is the out groups. The out groups are conglomerates looked upon the subordinates or marginal in the future. Example: street performers for an office workers, a hawker for a surgeon. Whenever these there is a win loss situation in a competitive task, members of win or loss groups show tremendous in group feeling within themselves their group in relation to the other groups is also called an out group our next topic is group roles group role shakespeare said all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players using the same metaphor all the group all group members are actors and each playing a role by this term we mean a set of expected behavior pattern attributed to someone occupying a given position in a social unit the understanding of role behavior would be dramatically simplified if each of us choose one role and play it out regularly and consistently we are required to play a number of diverse roles both on and off our jobs as we shall see one of the task is understanding behavior is grasping at the role that a person is currently playing for example on his job mr x is a plant manager with electrical industries a large electrical equipment manufacturer he has a number of roles to fulfill on the on that job for instance electrical industries employs members of middle management electrical engineer and a primarily primary company spokesman in the community of the job he find himself playing still more roles husband father rotarian tennis player number of the thunderbird country club and president of home owners association many of these roles are compatible while some create conflicts example how does the religious involvement influence his managerial decision regarding layoffs expenses account padding or providing accurate information to government agencies thus we are all required to play a number of roles and our behavior varies with the role we are playing role identity and perception there are certain attitudes and actual behaviors consistent with a role and they create a role identity people have the ability to shift roles rapidly when they recognize that the situation and its demands clearly require major changes for example when union steward were promoted to foreman positions it was found that their attitude changes changed in from pro union to pro management within a few months of their promotion when this promotion had to be later res- resigned because of economic difficulties in the firm it was found that the demoted foreman and once again adopted their pro union attitudes when the situation is more vacuous and the role one has to play is less clear people often revert to old identities in spite of the fact that some of the former losers were now winner by society's standard they found it very difficult to deal with the winners role when placed in an environmental in which they had played they had always been losers with the role requirements ill defined identities becomes clouded and individuals revo- reverted back to old patterns of behavior once on view of how one is supposed to act in a given situation is a role presito 
based on the interpretation interpretation of how we believe we are supposed to ha- behave we engage in certain types of behavior where do we get this perception one author suggests that we all learn roles from such media as movies books and television and from friends if this is true we might purpose that many persons may have formed their roles identities perceived their favorite character of course the primary reason appears appears apprenticeship programs exists in many trades and professions is to allow individuals to watch an expert so they can learn to act as they are supposed to role expectations and conflict role expectation are defined as how other believe you should act in a given situation how how you behave is determined to a large part by a role defined in the context in which you are acting the role of a parliament members is viewed as having properly and de- Uh, dignity whereas a football coach is a seen as aggressive dynamic and inspiring to his players when role expectations are concentrated into generalized categories we have role stereotypes during last decades we have seen a major change in the general population's role stereotypes of females In 1950 a woman's role was to stay home take care of the house bring up children and generally care for her husband Today most of us no longer hold these stereotypes girls can aspire to be doctors lawyers managers and astronauts as well as more traditional activities of nurse school teacher secretary or housewife In other words many of us have changed our role expectation of women and similarly many women carry new role perception In the workplace it can be helpful to look at the role expectations through the perspective of the psychological contract and unwritten agreement existing between employees and the employer it sets the mutual expectations what management expect from workers and vice versa in effect this contract defines the behavioral expectation but that go with every role management is expected to treat employees justly provide acceptable working conditions clearly communicate what is a fair days work and give feedback on how well the employees is doing in turn employees are expected to respond by demonstrating a group attitudes following directions and showing loyalty to the organization when an individual is confronted by divergent role expectations the result is role conflict it exists when the individual finds that compliance with one role requirement by make more difficult the compliance with another at the extreme it would include situations where two or more role expectations are mutually contradictory the issues of ethics in business demonstrate demonstrates a well publishes a well published areas of role conflict among corporate executives a recent study found that 57% of harvard business reviews readers and experienced the dilemma of having the choose between what was profitable for their firm and what was ethical spatial influences on role research evidence indicates that the way individual positions themselves within a group that is a spatial arrangement that they voluntarily develop is far from random spatial factors can also determine who within a group will uh, will be chosen or accepted for leadership role 
when one wants to take on the role of adversary pr to emphasize superior subordinates relationship it is natural to place a barrier between himself and others to identify a v they distinction this may more rapid readily be illustrated by comparing a traditional classroom situations where the instructor stands in front of the class before a podium with the students in clearly established neat rows and columns and a less structured situation with the chair geographically disperse about in the circle and the instructor taking one of the seats in the circle the latter positioning can be expected to increase group interactions reduce the feeling of superior subordinates interactions and place the instructor on more equal footing with the students our next topic is implication of formal and informal groups implication of formal and informal groups for management first formal groups committees as defined earlier under section 4.3 formal groups are established by the organization to accomplish specific task these groups includes commands group committees and task force ah uh, this section on this section we should further clarify co- committee organization as an important role of formally designed group and its complication implication and for management committees are special kind of group which serves the following purpose in an organization a exchanging views and information b recommending actions c generating ideas d making decisions the size of the committee is usually kept small it is to encourage good quantity of this decisions communications among various among number is thus limited to few with increase in the size of committee many members feel less willing or threatened to participate actively the chair person of the committee provides direction to the committee to fulfill the objectives of the committee he or she should be person of open mind and a careful listener he or she should allow members to voice their opinion and should not place his or her opinion above those of others he or she should involve everyone in the activities of the committee he or she should have active interest in the purpose of the committees and in the ideas of the numbers members he or she should help the committee focus on the task at the hand on the progress made the members of the committees should cooperate with each other to achieve the perf- purpose of the committee to a great extent of image of the committee depends on the cooperation of members with each other they should have stronger motivation to accomplish the task they should have effective communication with each other there should be more ideas generating in the groups along with increased satisfaction and performance if the members of the performance of the members it is the chair person who should try to ensure communication satisfaction and productivity among the members of the committee with today's organization becoming increasingly large and complex the committee form of organization will abundantly become more important and more widely used in future the modern manager must learn how his committees are or teams or commi- commissions or board or groups or task forces should be effectively formed and should function no matter whether he is a government or in the educational or religious or business organizations in other words the kind of group man, group managements will become more popular as well as important in times to come 
meeting of members in a committee may be time consuming and costly in so far as individuals time is concerned committees are also criticized for not uh, making the members responsible for bad decisions or mistakes many individuals use the committees as a shield to avoid personal responsibilities for bad decisions or mistakes in fact all the committee's members as well as chairperson should be made responsible for all decisions it is in the interest of the committee to differentiate between very conscious conscientious members who voted against the wrong decisions as well as those who took a particular decisions and can define it to the end many decisions taken by a committee may or may not be liked by members of the organization who are likely to be affected by it in spite of the above shortcoming that are likely to be here the future manager must learn to arrive at the improved decisions through the combined and integrated judgment of the committee members he or she can reduce conflict in the group facilitate coordination of various groups in the organization and increase commitment and motivation of members of the organizations through participations committees which are thus the finally organizes finally designated groups of organizations are assuming more importance in day to day functioning at any organizational level today they are acknowledged as significant features of group dynamics in organizational behavior second informal groups work groups informal groups pay a uh, play a significant role in the dynamics of individual organizational behavior a formal groups has officially prescribed goals and relationship which an informal groups does not have but we cannot think of these two groups as separate entities as they coexist and they are in inseparable every formal organization has informal groups and every informal organizations eventually involves some same balance of formal groups an illustration will make it clear when an engineer design the plan and technology for a new factory and when an architect design uh, the office layout they are also designing the social relations that will prevail in the organization the formal organization of the management uh, determines where men will work for work and what opportunities they will have to contact each other during the day also the rates of pay work conditions and other aspects of the job are decide, decided by the managers are important too given these basic elements one can predict the social relations that exist within the organization long before the first person is employed and enters the factory this is because of the fact that every person is told formally where the how he or she will has to work with whom to become in contact obviously one develops friendship with the people the most when come across in fact those employees who have the greatest opportunities to make contact on the job makes the largest number of friends in course of time they may be in the best position to become leaders of the group remember for yourself you who were the first person you came in contact with when you joined your present work organization how frequently did you meet them in course of action you have you noticed that you have become a member of your work group having made contact with quite a member quite a number of people trying to share your problems with them and their 
problems with you. This is how a work group is formed. In course of time, you select from amongst various groups you are in touch with the group which is important to you for your work. A group which matters to you for laser and recreations, a group which acknowledges you more for your personal qualities. As time passes, your affiliation with certain group becomes more meaningful and strong. Based on contacts and common interests, such friendship groups made by employees arise out of the life and of the organizations. Once these groups have been established, they develop a life of their own, which is almost completely separate from the work process from which they started. The process is dynamic and self-generating and makes the work group an organization in itself. Characteristics of Effective Work Groups In managing the organization, you have to understand how groups can be made into effective work groups. The factors that influence the work group effectiveness are norms, cohesion, and leadership. Let's see how each one of them contributes to making the group effective to achieve the objectives of the organization. First, group norms. When the group functions for the period of time to attain certain objectives, it develops norms or standards of behavior. A norm in a, is a rule. This tells the individual how to behave in a particular group. A uh, individual may be a member of the welfare group, a chess club, his family and his work group, you may like to watch his behavior in various groups. You will see the different kinds of behavior of the same individual in different groups. You may also notice that sometimes the norm is formal and acceptable by the group that way. For example, all members of a particular work group wear safety glasses while operating on a particular machine. All of them would do so by accepting these norms. On the other hand, a norm can be informal arising out of interactions and feeling of the people. Of the members of a, all the members of a task group decide to keep their output high by regulating their piece of work. For example, a number of typists decide to attain a target of 50 pages of neat typing every day, so they do it. It is also possible that another group may like to keep its output how low output low again because of some emergent activities, interactions and feeling of the group. So it is important to know what behavior is significant for the group which helps to develop a norm. In other words, having high or low output is equally influenced by what the group prescribed for the, its members as well as what other activities, interactions and feelings develop among the num members are in course of doing a work. So, we can say that one of the characteristics of norms is they develop behavior that is significant for the group. We also find another characteristics of norms. Some norms are applicable to some peoples only and not to all. For example, a manager of a group behaves differently from other members of the group. His or her behavior is what is expected for him or her in a given position by others. When a new member joins the group, he or she is expected to follow the norms more closely than the senior members. Some norms have central importance and are accepted by everyone for of the group, while others have less importance. Shechin 1974 talks of pivotal and re relevant group norms. A pivotal group norms is a norm to which every member must conform. A worker who remains absent or does not do any work 
will not last long in an organization. A relevant group norm is one which is neither central or nor absolutely essential to follow but is worthwhile and desirable. So any norms may be pivotal in group but may be irrelevant to another. Some of us conform to all the norms of the group, some of us re select only pivotal norms and acceptance, still others reject all values and norms of the group. It is usually seen that complete conformity to norms as in the first case and complete rejection of the norms as in the last one have undesirable consequences. A complete conforming individual loses his or her ability to influence the group. An individual who rejects all the group norms is likely to be expelled from the group. It is therefore advisable that individual exercises his or her choices of acceptance of the norms quite discreetly. It is equally important to understand that with increase in size of the group norms are less likely to be accepted it is also true that more intelligent persons are less likely to conform to norms you may notice that as the group increases in size there are change of subgroups being formed hence a uh, general norms for of the total group is difficult to maintain with uniform conformity all the time the last characteristics of norms is that they allow possible deviations. An individual who deviates too far gets punished. When uh, the union is on strike, its member atten attending to work is punished by their boycotted by the group. Ask yourself the following questions in the position of a manager. What have you understood about norms when you are formal leader of a group and when you are members of the group? Have you understood what the norms of various groups are? Do you know which are the central norms? Do people conform to norm completely? Do people wait for their leader to speak first in the meeting? Do people come in the time for meeting? Is disagreement allowed? No people have the common style of clothing. Do people come have a common style of clothing? As a manager, you must also try to understand why people opt to lower their output and if need be, you should change the situation in order to change the norm of low output. You should try to develop trust among your numbers in order to be able to influence and change or modify the norms of your group. Your effectiveness as a manager will increase with a high level of trust between you and your group members. Second, Group Cohesiveness This means the degree of which group numbers are motivated to remain within the group and Consequently, we have in similar ways a cohesiveness. Cohesive group also helps the number members in their satisfaction of needs and attainment of goals. Cohesiveness develops out of the activities, interactions, and sentiments of the people. The cohesive group act as one man to attain its goal. What is the factor which influences the cohesiveness? Size of group Which may few with very few people in the group, you may fall short of skilled hand to do a good job. With a large number of people, you may find it difficult to communicate and identify the best talent. At the same time, an individual members may not be happily with his or her interactions with the group. In the first case, there is breakdown of the task and in the second case, reaching out the people is difficult. Quite unintentionally, you may even encourage formal, 
formation of many sub groups in a group in a large group hence group cohesiveness will suffer proximity or geography of the group nearness or working closely together helps in groups cohesiveness it helps face to face contract a small in isolated work group is cohesive and work will work better to attain the goals outside pressure this binds together all the members against a common enemy and thus makes its members forget their differences you might have observed how groups become cohesive under outside pressure and there is first competition with other groups or second union management conflict or third reaction against the supervisor who closely supervises the work or five lack of trust between the manager and his groups or fifth is even mistrust between two groups accomplishing group goals as the group becomes more cohesive the members becomes more motivated to accomplish its goals and behave in similar ways accomplishing group goals increase the cohesiveness cohesion of the group failing to accomplish the group goals reduces the group cohesiveness it is necessary to remember that it is not always desirable to have group cohesiveness which may result in going against in objectives of the work group for example workers being highly cohesive may decide to work against the manager management so you must find out what the harmful effect are likely to be of a cohesive group examples of rejection of new ideas by cohesive group members are not uncommon at time these members feel that they know the best this kind of feeling is known as group think where members show tremendous desire the on in anonymity a great deal of solidarity and loyalty of the group override the motivation of the members to consider different courses of action logically and in a realistic manner in governmental administration may significant decisions are made on the basis of group things principle which have been quite unfortunate for a large number of group people as a manager you must make a cohesive group to accomplish organizational goals you have to give information get the resources for your members to accomplish the task and hold frequent open meeting o donal 1961 and philae 1970 suggest that one should try to avoid group link group thinks by having open discussion and allowing conflicting points of view group leadership as you have stated in unit 13 leadership is the ability to influence the behavior of others any effective work group wanting to accomplish its task gaining some sort of social satisfaction and having some sense of contribution and growth should like to look up to the leader to help reach these goals informal leaders often emerge from the activities interactions sentiments of the ongoing group they may help the group to accomplish its task to uh, fulfill its social goals you will also always notice the formal task instructions comes from the superiors supervisors but uh, informal helps comes from the informal leaders informal leaders may be lower in official status but the formal leaders than the formal leaders but the help the group satisfy both personal and organizational goals in this job is done by the formal leader then there will be no informal leader in emerging out of the group if the f- informal leaders help in attending the organizational goals then the becomes then he becomes task oriented like a formal leader 
एंड देयर मे बी चेंसेस दैट अ सोशल लीडर्स विल इमर्ज टू मेंटेन अ बैलेंस बिटवीन ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल एंड पर्सनल नीड्स इन ऑर्डर टू बी इफेक्टिव एज अ मैनेजर यू मस्ट रिकोगनाइज द एक्सिस्टेंस ऑफ इनफॉर्मल लीडर्स एंड वर्क विद डेम टू डेवलप ग्रुप नॉर्म्स ऑफ हाई प्रोडक्टिविटी बिल्ड मोर क्वेश्चन एंड इनेबल द मेम्बर्स टू हैव दियर सोशल नीड्स सेटिस्फाइड मैनेजिंग ग्रुप्स प्रोडक्टिविटी इन योर रोल एज अ मैनेजर यू विल डू वेल टू रिमेंबर सम यूजफुल वेज टू मेक योर वर्क ग्रुप इफेक्टिव एज ओ डोनल्ड नाइनटीन सिक्सटी वन सजेस्ट यू मस्ट नो द फॉलोइंग टू मेक योर ग्रुप्स ऑफ पीपल टूवर्ड्स अटेनिंग द गोल्स first content while having a meeting with your group members try to understand the subject matter of the task to be performed by the committee this will help you to see the problem clearly and solve it too first is decide about the size of the committee having about 5 to 15 members and include expert in the committee to solve the, your problem second distribute the agenda before the meeting is held to all the members third is specify the timing of the meeting the fourth is encourage persons to present their ideas and do not encourage them to pick up the first feasible solutions to the problem allow them to think of various alternative solutions and next is periodically summarize the discussion and restate the current position of the committee as to whether the committee has to finally decide on the solutions or only recommend a uh, solutions to the higher authority advise the higher authority second process this involves how the content is handled or discussed in the by the members Benet and Sheets 1948 describes three effective ways to approach the group processes. One of the way the content is handled is the is by group task activities. You may initiate orient the group to its goals, coordinates, gives and seek information about the problems. another way may be through the group building activities like encouraging members to cooperate with each other in the work encourage people to participate share jokes or humor with them at time and see it see to it that they enjoy doing the work group work because of a good group atmosphere this is the group building activities which helps a manager to establish better group relationship still another way the group member satisfy their needs is through self serving activities members satisfy their needs at the cost of others you might have noticed that more behave in a dominating manner more try to get attention more behave aggressively and more withdraw while working in the group persons engaged in the above activities are only serving their own purposes or interest rather than helping the group to achieve its goals you must try to understand the difference between the content and process to make the group more effective too much of task activities and too little of group building activities is not the group way to make an effective work group self serving activities are sign of non constructive satisfaction of valid personal needs and the disruptive they reduce the ability of the group to attain its objective many times we overlook the fact that people can be both emotional and rational in understanding the content and process of work emotion the realize that have to be taken care of a group members group ma- a good manager must be neglect the group building activities as it may make group and activities meeting if ineffective 
he or she should draw on the influence of the informal group by integrating its objectives with those of formal groups as well as try to keep the formal activities from uncertainly unnecessarily disruptive the informal organization now we will know about the unit summary of group dynamics summary of group dynamics in this unit we have come across the input the groups represents an important dynamics input into organizational behavior group formation types and theories have relevance to the study of organization members in an organization form into groups for satisfying their security social and esteem needs we have also come across the concept of formal and informal groups which are especially important in organizational functioning we are we have discussed the role of the individual in the groups identification perception and various expectations of the groups members and the self from the role occupant ultimately leading to conflict committees and work group in particular plays an important role in modern organization characteristics of effective work groups such as group norms group cohesiveness and group leadership are discussed and finally suggestions have been made about how to manage effective groups and committees management in the future must be able to understand and when possible takes advantage of groups dynamics of formal and informal groups in organization